Hello and welcome to my KSP campaign. My name is Mike Aben. And while I uh, go through my options of how to spend my science that was transmitted from Minmus's sphere of influence uh, at the, towards the end of last episode, oh man, so many choices with the recently updated Research and Development Center, um, why don't I talk about uh, what's coming up in this particular episode? You may recall from last episode that we left the crew of the Kerpalo 2 only about an hour or so away from their closest approach to Minmus, so we'll definitely be going back to that right off the bat. And then after that, we're going to be launching the Kerstock 5, which is going to be sending our first crew to the Karayan, which is going to be our permanent uh, Kerbin exploration vessel. So that will be an exciting thing as well. But I really do need to make a choice here. Anyway, I eventually settled on this advanced fuel systems here, mostly for these connector ports that come from uh, Kerbal Attachment System. I mean, there's a whole periphery of other fuel tanks, including uh, monoprop tanks in a whole variety of different sizes and some, well, there's also some interstellar cryostatic uh, fuel tanks with liquid helium in them. Yeah, uh, I don't think I'm ready. It's, uh, Interstellar loves giving you uh, the fuel before you have the technology in order to use it, but that's okay. What I really want, though, are the uh, connector ports because uh, that's really going to be a big part of what I have uh, planned coming up. But uh, let's, you know, with that accomplished, let's get ourselves out to Minmus. Having already sucked out what science we can out of high space around Minmus last episode, and having been in space for over 10 days in tight confinement, I want to get these folks back home as quickly as I can. So I've already plotted out the burn, did that last episode. It is several minutes before periapsis uh, with Minmus, which is great because it allows me to perform the burn and then uh, I don't have to think about the burn and collecting low, you know, space, near space science at the same time. I can just worry about collecting the near space science uh, after the burn has been accomplished. Now, I'm not exactly sure where the transition is between, you know, high space and near space around Minmus. So I'm just sort of keeping alert. I really want to make sure to get the EVAs. Those are the ones to make to get as soon as they pop up. And Science Alert will let me know when, oh, there oh there we go, camera switch to, let's get that EVA first. You want to get the EVAs first because they're biome specific. That one was over the Midlands. Want to get that. And then you can get these other ones just anywhere near space. So I'm going to scoop them up as quick as I can here. But the ones I'm really looking for are EVAs. Those are the ones, oh, another EVA report. See, that one's over the slopes. Biomes are packed together. Oh. I think I got another EVA report. Yep, another EVA report. Oh, I got the temperature scan. Another EVA report. That one was over the highlands. So I've got three EVAs over three different biomes already. Yeah, they, they come up pretty quick sometimes. Some of them in Minnes are packed together really quickly. Anyway, I do want to transmit some of this data. And these guys aren't going to be home for another six or seven days. So here, this is, looks like a good one to transmit. Transmit. Oh. Oh, of course not. Oh, yeah, I'm on the far side of Minmus. I'm sure uh, Kerbin is in the communication shadow behind Minmus, so I can't transmit. Okay, that's okay. Uh, yeah, I'll have to think about this. Um, I won't be able to transmit until I'm back out from behind Minmus. And by that point, I probably won't be in space near Minmus anymore. Which means I won't know. If, if something goes wrong with the transmission, I won't be able to go back and get it again. Uh, because I'm on a flyby trajectory. I'm, I'm, I'm not coming to near space uh, for a while after this is done. So, no, I think I'll hang on to these. I think that's the safer course rather than transmitting. So, we just got to wait again for more EVAs to come up. You know, we're almost out of near space. It was at uh, 30 kilometers when we entered in near space, and we're almost there again. You can see Kerbin hanging there off in the distance. We're obviously... Oh, EVA report! What's this one? Lowlands. There we go. Excellent. Get back in, and that is going to be that. 30 kilometers, and now we are in 
space high above Minmus. You can see Kerbin there off in the distance. That means we're out of the communication shadow, but I am not going to be doing any transmitting. I'm going to hang on to these. We'll get Carol out there, we'll get her to do some EVAing, collect up this science. And uh, then it's just about thinking about getting these folks home. Okay, so i got to come around the other side here to get the thermometer. There it is. Come on. Give me oh! A tank of carbon dioxide is leaking. Well, as far as leaks go, I suppose that's one of the least threatening. I can see that it's in red there, right to the left of Carol. That's not a big deal, but you know what? Perhaps I should have Bill take a look at it anyway. Let's see if we can figure out how do we do these dang it repairs. Uh, I've never really had to do one before. In order to do the repairs, you do have to be an engineer, and this is actually my first mission where I've had an engineer along. Now, Bill has zero experience. <laughs> that was part of the reason why I brought him along here. So I have my doubts as to whether he can fix this. Let's see, inspect. Nothing happened. Inspect. Okay. Apply duct tape. You need one spare part to repairs to repair this. Bill has no idea what he's doing. Okay, I was a little bit... Okay, so this is just the inspections. It's telling me the parts failed, and that was the initial warning. Okay, so we need to get a part, and Bill has... It doesn't even have ev or spare parts as a resource here. So I got to go back up to the capsule and get some spare parts. Alrighty, so we'll get back up there. You know, later in the game, uh, TAC life support does give you things like oxygen reclamation, which allows you to turn the carbon dioxide back into oxygen. So potentially this could be a bad thing. Let's see here. Take spares. As I was saying, potentially this could be a big deal. You know, if you didn't have a lot of stored oxygen and were dependent upon the carbon dioxide and oxygen reclamation, but I'm just doing this to just to see that I know how to do it. So right click, apply duct tape. Bill has no idea how to fix this. Yes, so he's not a high enough level, as I expected. No big deal. So Bill, yeah, he just looks at the duct tape in one hand and the gas leaking out of the tank and... And he just goes, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know how to fix this. Duct tape. What am I supposed to do with that? Oh, well. Uh, why don't we play around with the EVA? I figured out more about the EVA uh, enhancements mod. Uh, one of the big ones being I had it backwards with uh, using SAS while on EVA. So it's when you do not have the SAS on that the camera doesn't lock on the back. So right now I've got the SAS off. And uh, I can boot around here. I'm going back towards the ship now. And you can see I'm not locked on the back. I'm just looking at Bill's smiling face as he's having lots of fun doing his EVAs. He may not know what to do with duct tape, but Bill is an EVA god. <laughs> yeah, So, and then if you put on the SAS, the camera is like how it is in the default game where it locks in on the back, see? So I can move around here. Oh, let's go back. Let's see if we can uh, get back in the capsule going backwards. That'd be fun, right? Let me see what we can do. You know what? And not just backwards. Let's see if we can go in backwards and upside down. So we're going to fly backwards and upside down. Well, upside down relative to Kerbal's camera, obviously, really no down. Down is towards the planet, but whatever. You know what I'm talking about. All right, so here we go. We're thrusting. Uh, <laughs> everything's a little backwards now, obviously. Okay, let's get them back. I want to get into the capsule with this orientation. We can do it. Bill's still having fun. I don't know. He doesn't look to be having as much fun as he did a moment ago. Maybe he doesn't like this. Come on, Bill. It makes no difference. Okay. Whoop. And I got to turn around this way. But I'm going to keep his orientation the same. Oh, yeah. We can do this. We're oh, wait, 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 wait. There, that way. The other way. 
<laughs> Grab it. Oh, yeah. There we go. <laughs> All righty. I think we've had enough fun with these guys. Uh, what we've got to do, we're going to time warp and get out of the Minmus Sphere of Influence because we are now done with Minmus. And then we're going to tweak our arrow breaking maneuver and get into the final stages of getting these folks back. Oh, oh, Curse Stock 5 is done. Okay. Yeah, thanks to Kerbal Construction Time, stuff is still going on at the uh, KSC while we're messing around at Minmus. So just wait, just wait. Hang on, hang on a second. Let's let's slow down. Let's take a look at uh, what's going on here. Okay, Curse Stock 5 is done. Let's look at the VAB. Okay, I got three days to the launch pad is going to finish being reconditioned, uh, which is longer than normal, but that's because my last launch was huge. But I, I think I want to launch the Curse Stock 5 first. So I'm going to roll back maps at 2, launch the Curse Stock 5. Oh, and then and Junk Sap 4 will get done before the la a launch pad is finished being reconditioned as well. I'm going to have quite the backlog of launches to have to deal with here. Anyway, let's uh, tweak our arrow breaking maneuver here. So again, we're going to use the trajectories mod to help us out. And trajectory, we'll put ourselves retrograde because that's the way we'll be going through the atmosphere. And trajectories is predicting a pretty small orbit and g-forces of just over half a g. And uh, uh, no, I don't like that. I'm going to, I like my g-forces to be, let's, let's focus on Kerbin, it'll be easier to see this. There we go. I want my g-forces to be underneath, uh, or no more than a quarter of a g. That will hopefully make things a little less dangerous. <laughs> Arrow breaking is always a little bit, uh, I don't know. So what we'll do, we'll point ourselves prograde. I'm going to use RCS so I have just little, just hitting the H key, little puffs, and I'm puffing, puffing, puffing until a little more. Looking, there we go. G max G force 0.23. I think that'll be do it. So that leaves me in orbit. It's a little high, but again, these guys have lots of food. There's no reason to rush it. I think that's good. So, this is not going to happen for several days yet, so it's time for us to move on to something else. Meanwhile, back at the Kerbal Space Center, an important event is about to take place. Well, at least I think it's an important event. It's going to be the upgrading of the space plane hangar to level 2. And why is this important? Well, because this now makes the entire KSC a level 2 KSC. I've upgraded now all the buildings to the next level. A big event. And here we are a few days later with the reconditioning of the launch pad now complete. And the Curse Dock 5 sitting on the pad. The Curse Dock has become my sort of orbital taxi. At least for the next little while until I build myself a better one and in there is Jebediah, our pilot, and our engineer, Glafia. And so what we're going to do, we're going to set up the rendezvous data because we're going to rendezvous with the Karayan. It's nice that we can select it here. And now you can see the target icon for the Karayan. It is just about overhead. That's not coincidental, by the way. I went to map view and made sure it was there. And I'm going to launch um, as it gets a little bit past directly overhead. Uh, why do I have, this is the default rendezvous data, why do I have that? I have my custom rendezvous, there we go, that's the rendezvous one I want. Okay, um, anyway, as I was saying, it's 120 kilometers, which is the orbit that the Karayan is in, is sort of my standard kind of orbit, so I'm very used to rendezvousing with things in that particular orbit, so I just let it get a little bit ahead of my location. I'm going to go into an 80 kilometer orbit and yeah why don't we go for it. So uh, I'm going to go into an 80 kilometer orbit and I want to be, oh I lost the target. Oh nice I can select it right here. That's one of the nice things about the uh, having Kerbal Engineer. I don't have to go to map view to select my target. 
and there we go. So we're off. And like I was saying, uh, I'm going into a lower orbit, so that's why I'm going to be a little bit behind it. Um, it if you end up a little bit ahead of it, it's better to err on the side of being a little bit behind it because then you just got to catch up and that won't take very long. If you end up ahead of it, you got to do a, you know, spin around the planet a bunch of times till you come back around and catch up to it. One sort of little sad fact about Jebediah, well, while we have it on there, Jebediah is still level zero. That, that's a sad thing. He has never done an orbit. So this is clearly something he is looking forward to. I think he is the right man for the job to be our first pilot of the Karayan. And with that complete, comes the time for us to plan our rendezvous. And you've seen me do this before, but I've got it into my head. I'm going to get my rendezvous, my encounter, right down to zero. Which, frankly, is kind of silly, because I wouldn't be able to burn it that precisely anyway. But, I don't know, just to do it. So you notice here that I am using a bit of normal burn to pull that ascending node towards where my encounter is. If you want to have a zero encounter, even when your orbits are pretty close to having the same inclination, then you're going to need to have the encounter occur at either the ascending or the descending node, and you use a normal burn to pull that node around. Now the thing to notice here is that as, if you take a look at the amount of prograde burn that I have, and the amount of normal burn that I have, and then the total amount of burn, Notice that the added bit of normal really isn't affecting the total burn all that much. This, this, this sort of screwing around really isn't, you know, making my burn that much more expensive. Um, and in fact, in the end, uh, it ends up being pretty much the same deal because no matter how I do it, I have to do this little bit of normal because eventually I do have to get these two orbits to be exactly inclined the same because I'm going to be matching velocities with the, with the incoming ship. So whether I do the normal correction down here at 80 kilometers, or whether I do it up at 120 kilometers, because the altitude change is so small, it really doesn't make that much of a difference in the amount of normal correction that I have to do. The key, though, is that you do both parts of the burn at the same time. And the reason why that little bit of normal isn't adding that much to my overall burn is because the two directions of the burn, normal and prograde, are perpendicular to each other, so they don't add in a linear way. In other words, you just don't, really don't add the numbers together in order to get the total amount of burn. You use the Pythagorean theorem. I remember that from high school, the Pythagorean theorem? <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, so you use the Pythagorean theorems, and so if you can combine burns together, um, you can make your overall burn much more efficient rather than doing one part of the burn and then immediately afterwards doing the other part of the burn. And I'm sure there'll be some point in the future we'll have an opportunity to talk about this where it's a, a little bit more clear of the advantage that you're doing yourself when you are combining burns together. But right now, we seem to be coming within sight of the Karayan. Do you see it there? We'll turn off the UI there. Just in the lim just in the atmosphere, right on the limb of the planet. I can see, maybe you can't quite see it there. Yeah, it's the Chinese space station. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Do you remember that scene from uh, Gravity? You know, where George Clooney's explaining to Sandra Bullock, you know, they're, they're around where the Hubble telescope is, and they go, okay, if you look over there, there's the ISS, and if you look just past it, there's the Chinese space station. What? Like, come on. <laughs> We're about a kilometer away from the Karayan, who can just start to see it, like, and this is at one-tenth scale in Kerbal Space Program. That, 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 that scene just, just bugged me. There we go. Now we just have to kill off our velocity. Our relative velocity. Sorry for the nighttime rendezvous. It's hard to control these sort of things, but at least the, uh, Karayan is lit up nice. We can see it well now. And we'll turn the hatch so the hatch is facing in the right direction to help us orient ourselves. And of course, our first person over is going to be Jebediah, our pilot. He has to go over there and check systems and whatnot. <laughs> I'm not much of a pilot. I'm okay with the physics stuff, but all the electronic stuff. Yeah. Let's see. And there is a flashing light by the hatch. 
That should help me find it. And of course, as these things always seem to work that way, it's on the other side. Around here somewhere. And again, as Murphy's Law would predict, I went around the long way. There it is. All right. And then Jeb will board himself. And then it's time to get Glafia over here. Now Glafia is not simply just going to fly on over. She is an engineer. And we do have Kerbal attachment system and Kerbal inventory system. So we're going to open up her inventory. And she has a wrench. And we're going to equip it. And I know it's dark right here. You'll see it better once we're in the light of... Uh, the Korion, but uh, she has a wrench now actually in her hand. It's 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 actually there. And we're going to do some stripping. <laughs> Remember how the Korion, I forgot to put a Kerbal Engineer chip on it? Well, the Kerstock here has one. So I think we might just use our wrench to kind of take it. So we press G to grab it and we just drag it over and it's now in her inventory. In other words, she has it. And there is a size restriction and a mass restriction to what she can carry, but that engineer chip is well under that. And we're going to go over to the Korion here and install it onto the Korion so we'll have Kerbal Engineer now for the Korion. The Kerstock won't miss it. I mean, we'll deorbit it once we get these folks back. And I put a couple of handholds on the Korion because I knew I'd be doing a lot of this sort of Kerbal attachment, Kerbal inventory system stuff. Can you see her wrench now? <laughs> That's awesome. There are other tools she'll get later, but uh, right now it's just the wrench and the wrench can only work with small parts. I'm not 100% sure exactly how big small parts can be. Let's try that again. So I, there's no action. Okay, so again, I, I just grab it, pull it to where I want it, let go. Yep, there we go. And then it's H to attach. And then click. <laughs> there we go. We now have a tool. So we'll unequip this. We also have a book. She has a book there. And the book, we'll read it, is the actual manual for Kerbal Inventory System in game. I mean, is that not awesome or what? Don't you kind of wish, like, all mods kind of came with that? Maybe the game came with that? That your Kerbals could have a manual that they could read? You know what I think I like the most about all of this is it really gives engineers a purpose. I mean, let's face it, in the stock game, I mean, engineers really can't do much. You got pilots, you got scientists. They, they both have clear functions, but engineers in the stock game don't. Now they do. I mean, thanks to Kerbal Attachment System. And same with Dang It. You know, only engineers can fix stuff in Dang It. Suddenly, I like engineers. Engineers have purpose. And that's great. Let's take a look inside here. Ooh. That's a little on the bland side. That is the onion capsule that is up there on the top. There's a second capsule, the soy juice capsule which is below that. Perhaps its interior is a little nicer. But anyway, these guys do have a mission. The mission is to rescue Tamley Kerman, who is stuck in this crazy high orbit and has been up there for a very long time. And we finally now have the means to go get her. But I think that's going to have to be for the next episode. Yeah, I'm going to be drawing this one to a close. I thank you for watching, and I hope to see you next time.